Hello everybody, that's Olga today with you and I have a very beautiful girl from Belarus. She is a very great blogger. She has exactly the same channel like me, just about Belarus. And today with her we are going to make you a video where we will discuss all stereotypes about Ukraine and Belarus, which I hear from you and from many other people. And we will tell you what is true and what is not. Okay, welcome Uliana. Uh, hello, my name is uh, Uliana, as Olga already told you. Thank you very much for telling me that I'm beautiful. <laughs> Let's discover maybe some other aspects <laughs> of me in this video. Uh, so yeah, I guess you prepared some questions for, uh, for yeah. me. Yeah, uh, I prepared some questions, so we will discuss now. The first thing which everybody told, tell about Ukraine and Belarus that people drink a lot. Everybody is alcoholics. Or you walking you on the street? Do you think it's true or not? <laughs> no, for sure not. I know about Ukraine that it's not because sure we have some percentage of people who like to drink. I guess like in any country, and just maybe our people talk about that more, or maybe I don't know, alcohol is cheaper, or just it's. Some people see Ukraine from this perspective, but that's not true. Many people don't drink at all. And now, like, healthy lifestyle is a very trendy, so it's not true at all. Uh, you know, like a week ago, I recorded a video. It's already online. By the way, I have a channel also on YouTube, but it's in Arabic. It's called Batata Belarusia. So we recorded a video that is called uh, Why Russians, I meant Slavs, like Ukrainians, Russians, Belarusians, drink a lot and never smile. Uh, so, uh, you know, I wanted to record this video to show that no, we're not drinking a lot, absolutely not. But then I tried to find some statistics online and turned out that Moldova, Lithuania and Belarus, and Belarus is on the top, is the most popular countries when it comes to the consumption of alcohol. So we were trying to figure it out and turned out that, yeah, during New Year, for example, yeah, we drink <laughs> more than others, <clears throat> sorry, but it doesn't mean that we drink in the morning, yeah, the I guess that's exactly the, true, that night. we drink a lot in the holidays. Some people just think probably that they will come to our country and see uh, drunk people everywhere on the benches, at the bushes. Uh, but, but you know, one time we had the European Championship of Football and so many people from Sweden, from England came to Kiev exactly because there was a game and they was totally drunk and they was get, get, getting crazy because of the cheap, very cheap prices of alcohol. Yeah. And these people here in Ukraine, they was drinking so much that even our guys was getting shocked. So I guess maybe if in your countries the, the drink would be so much cheap like in Ukraine, it would be even much, much worse than we have it in Ukraine. Yeah, actually. That's true. The next stereotype is actually my favorite, <clears throat> that Ukrainian girls and actually Slavic girls, all girls here, Russian, Ukrainian, I guess for many partners, it's all the same. They're easy to get. And yes, yes, they are here are very poor and we dream to get married with foreigners and yes we just see any kind of foreigner and we are happy to do everything with him what do you think I think it might be at some point uh, seem to be true seem to be true because uh, when you like I don't know it's just not only Slavic I think it would be like European more because that's true that let's say in Middle East it's not that easy to get a lady because you need to get married first <laughs> And in our culture, no, you don't have to get married to be in a relationship with a lady. And I mean, this is what ladies want. Uh, but the uh, idea of money, I think that's uh, completely wrong. I mean, in every country in the world, you will find a lady who will be with you for money. And of course, you will find them here. But we can't say that this is the majority. They just exist everywhere in the world. I don't know if you agree on that. Yeah, actually, I agree that, you know, everywhere is the percentage of the girls who, mm, I don't know, this kind of girls, let's say like that, there is, they are everywhere, I guess. Really, if you will go, she said true that in any European countries you will have such kind of girls. In the US, I guess you will find but such kind of even, girls. Even like in, in uh, India, even in Arabic countries, everywhere will be ladies who will get married just for money. 
it's not just so yeah i'm not talking even about money but you know the girls who like to, to have some guys to entertain yes maybe she wants to have some benefits out of that but in general it doesn't say that all girls because i see many guys are coming to ukraine really with the purpose to find a girl and they think that yes i have nothing actually i'm very average guy for my country but i know that in ukraine they are very struggling and they are ready just to take a first foreigner who accept to get married with them or who yeah. just give them some kind of like perspective that yes yes you may have a better life that's not true our girls are pretty smart uh, just come to on, scam come on. you like you remember your just last videos about village yeah maybe if you come to that village and be like all that cool prince on the white horse yeah maybe the lady be like oh my god oh yeah i want so yeah in this and case, maybe but not, not in the capital <laughs> yeah yeah not in the capital for sure girls are here very advanced as well well the next stereotype that we are still living in ussr here and we are all that kind of country what you can say you should say first because you i what i see in Kiev, uh, that's it like you're not well it anymore. <laughs> yeah first maybe for somebody who don't know we are already not in ussr since 28 years so it's the whole generation actually grown up <laughs> like mm -hmm. she she never been in ussr me actually also and um in Ukraine, it's some kind of diverse. So if you will go to capital or big cities, most likely you will not find uh, a lot of things which will remind you about USSR. But if you will go to some small cities, and it depends from the local management, local government, sometimes you can really feel yourself like you're in USSR, like nothing changed in that time, just things get destroyed and nothing new was built. That's true. In some remote places, in villages, or in some small cities, it can be. But in a capital, for sure not. You will not feel USSR anywhere. Yeah, in Belarus you will. <laughs> uh, not that much in the capital, but even in some big regional cities, yeah, you do feel it because you see the buildings from the USSR, you see like the people, even like some of them, they look like they are from USSR. Uh, and if you talk about small towns, uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm originally from a very small town called Garadok, it's in the north of Belarus. They changed it, so now you don't have this uh, uh, the soul of the union, but uh, because they changed it recently for some uh, event. But other small cities, honestly, I don't think that many things changed. But the biggest uh, Soviet Union uh, idea in uh, Belarus is uh, the system itself, the bureaucracy, uh, the procedures, all of it is Soviet, like all the uh, foreigners who come to us, uh, they are very shocked and surprised when, the, uh, when at the airport uh, there is this lady uh, who takes your passport and she has this, I don't know how it's called, this small lupa. Uh, yeah, I understand. <laughs> small glass and she checks on the stamp. Uh, in your passport, yeah. Soviet but you Union. know, for the protection of the Belarus, I want to say that Belarus under the Second World War was totally destroyed, unlike Kiev or Russia. Russia almost didn't suffer, just little part physically, I mean. And Belarus was totally destroyed two times, so all Germans go through it here so and back. I'm that you know about it, because yeah, most for sure. people don't know. Yeah, so it just totally get destroyed and in Soviet Union they rebuilt everything so that's why it has very Soviet architecture so it doesn't have anything what was before because I, I really don't know how it was before but I guess there was very interesting architecture and now yes the most of the things is very Soviet like in Kiev they just rebuilt few streets and that's all the most funny part what is your favorite the most stupid stereotype about your country you will not believe me <laughs> because uh, as you know my audience is arab countries and this stereotype is just killing me no it's not connected to the girls easy to get it's not connected to i don't know like soviet parts uh, sometimes i get messages uh, like oh liana i really want to come to your country but i'm scared because of mafia <laughs> really <laughs> and i was like excuse me what mafia is like i'm scared that i'm gonna come and they're gonna kidnap me and they're gonna steal everything i'm like what i've been living there for 23 years <laughs> and i never heard or saw any kind of mafia but 
I don't know why this thing is still in the people's heads. Uh, the mafia part was in 90s and now it's completely over and no one wants to steal anything from you or and kidnap anybody. you or whatever. <laughs> it doesn't exist, yeah. Well, in um, Ukraine, I, I would say that, you know, stereotypes is vary from the people because you have audience mostly from one region. I yeah. have people from different regions and yes, like all kind of Americans, they are so much uh, worrying about safety and kidnapping as well. So many people are really scared to get out of United States anywhere, especially to Ukraine, because yes, yes, this is something totally terrible. Somebody will kidnap me and they will kill me or stuff like that. So for sure, this is very stupid because everybody who is coming here, they said it's much more safe than even in the United States, in Europe and so on. Like we have much less brutality. So you are walking on the street and somebody will grab your bag. This is something very unusual situation. And for people from Arab countries, India and Pakistan, they are mostly time talking about racism, that oh, people will not like me because I'm like this, people will uh, deal with me bad, but this is not true. But sometimes some people are, uh, like their behavior is in such way that people really can offend them and say, hey, what do you think you are at all, you know? Yeah. So it's not just because you are any kind of color of the skin, it's just like, yes, it's uh, very clear that you're a foreigner and if you don't respect the culture, if you don't respect the country, you can get kicked, yes, so that's yeah, can true. Can I get uh, some little part of promotion for yeah, myself? Yeah, for I also sure. have a video for Arabic audience, it's called Alon Suryev in Belarus, which means racism in Belarus that I completely cover this topic and I think it will be applicable also for Ukraine. I tell in this video why racism happens and what is the type of racism that we have. It's not about us, it's about the behavior of, so of some particular people. So yeah, uh, I don't think that people should be scared of coming to our countries and feel not safe. If you behave well and in the right way, Everything will be fine. <laughs> well, and the last thing, it's actually not exactly the stereotype, but Ulana, she has her travel agency and she is the most favorite, the most famous travel <laughs> agent in Belarus. So I just Only want for Arabic audience, <laughs> because all of our guides speak Arabic. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I just want to ask you, what do you think, how Belarus can be really interesting, in short, because you know, you can talk a lot, in short, how it can be interesting for tourists, because many people think it's boring. Belarus is not a very touristic country so far. I would say that tourism uh, started in Belarus around one year ago, when, there were, uh, when the government allowed around uh, 80 countries to enter Belarus without visa. Uh, what is Belarus in a couple of words? It's clean. Everyone says it. it's clean. It's safe and it's calm. We don't have this type of movement and uh, party atmosphere that Ukraine has. Yeah, we have specific places for partying, but no, like not all the cities having fun almost every day. Uh, it's very suitable for families. Uh, like we have many um, uh, families from Gulf countries that visit us during summer for very long periods of time, like maybe three or four weeks uh, in order to escape the hot weather in the region because in Belarus uh, during summertime we have like maximum 26, 28 degrees. Uh, it's a cheap country also uh, because it's not touristic, the prices didn't jump very up, <laughs> very high, that's why it's very uh, good for your pocket and your budget. And I guess it, it, because it's not touristic, so you don't have a lot of scam for foreigners. Uh, so far, yeah, we <laughs> don't have a lot of scam. Recently, there has started some scams with nightclubs and uh, apartments. But actually, I experienced the same here yesterday <laughs> when it came to apartments. Yeah, so far, yeah, not a lot. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you like Uliana and you want to hear more, you can visit her channel. She has a very nice YouTube channel. At least you can watch if you will not understand what she's talking about. <laughs> yeah, she's a very nice girl, really. She will show so many interesting parts of the Belarus. And if you will come to Belarus, for sure, go to her agency. She is <laughs> very nice. Very much she has a lot of nice guides. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. And please give me two likes because we was trying for you here in this video. And I love you all. Bye-bye.